Over the past couple of months, I've repeatedly heard the term that desktop Linux development is slow. But what the heck does that even mean? Linux for workstations has always seemed to be behind competing operating systems like Windows, Mac OS or even Android. But is that actually true? And furthermore, is Linux even competing with these platforms? What makes development seem so slow? And is it even true? Make sure that you press that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos and we're off. Linux, especially for people who've never heard of it before, is something that only seems half-baked. For once, since its distributions aren't really advertised, it seems like a niche product with lots of missing applications and complicated console commands. And secondly, it just can't keep up. Or does it? Developing an operating system is hard. And what's even harder is to keep up with constantly changing trends that will continue to reel in new customers. I mean, just look at Windows, Google and Apple for example. If someone decides to change their design, then suddenly the whole industry is moving towards it. If you're too slow, then you suddenly feel too old and no one cares anymore. But here we already run into our first issue. On Linux, you have choice. There are many so-called desktop environments, which are vastly different from each other and can be customized to one's liking. Some of them are even based on some. But the thing is that most developers of these desktop environments don't really steer into the direction of new trends. They already know what they like and if their user base wants something new, then they can just go and install something else. But that being said, even if a desktop environment seems like its development is slow because it doesn't change rapidly, there is a certain truth to it. There are many, and in my opinion even necessary features that are still not implemented yet. For example, a feature that is missing from literally every single desktop environment I've tried so far is adjusting bit rates and audio depth of audio devices. And while yes, this is technically not a Linux issue, since you can change its configuration, it is something that is missing from desktop Linux. A good graphical user interface is essential for good usability. But how do you design something like that? How is usability defined? Well, it depends. Some would say that good usability is only achieved if the user does not need to look up anything. Everything is clear right from the start. Others would not really agree that easily, since if you were to develop a complex application with lots of settings, then guiding the user through everything just takes up way too much time. So it's not good usability then. What you need to find is a balance. And it's exactly that balance that is off on many distros and desktop environments. KDE and GNOME for example introduce many changes with each new release and yet since version 3 GNOME didn't really seem to change all that much. It's like I said, slow. But we shouldn't let that blind us because there are definitely things that do need to change. Let's talk about redundancies because these are actually slowing down development. X11 and Wayland for example, both are protocols that serve the purpose to display graphics on your screen. X11 is the old reliable option, but it has a lot of limitations and old dependencies. For example, multi-monitor setups are being handled as one big screen. If the refresh rates are different, then which one is the united screen supposed to have? Wayland on the other hand is the new deal. It fixes a lot of issues that X11 has. However, its more secure approach is limiting a lot of functionality. For example, it is not possible to share your screen via Discord or OBS if you don't have Pipewire or a similar additional application. And the same issues also apply to audio solutions. But that leaves us with a big controversial problem because Linux is about choice. And no, I'm not suggesting that all distributions should just choose one solution and go with that. Because then we would just get the Windows and Apple experience just open source. Sure, a unified way to handle audio and video on Linux would be nice to have. But we would lose the thing that makes it so amazing. Choice. Now I'm still not defending some very obvious choices that keep getting postponed. Tearing in Wayland for lower latencies? Still not fully implemented yet. Waiting for HDR support? Also slow, but it's finally happening. Big thanks to Valve at this point, who are really helping us in that regard. So what are my thoughts on this matter? 
I agree that some features take a very long time on Linux. But I can't really complain much about the rest. Linux development is not slow, since a lot of new things get implemented in the backend and might not be visible to the end user. But those optimizations are still there. Be aware that because of that, Linux continues to be more lightweight than Windows. If they were to release features just because they can, then it would just become as or maybe even more bloated than Windows already is. So is it already better than proprietary operating systems? Well, there is no real answer for that, because it heavily depends on the distro and the use case. Windows is something for everyone. Apple is more designated to workstations and Linux can be whatever you want it to be while also offering the choice to remove unwanted stuff. Sure, it has many problems and I'm not going to deny that. But honestly, nowadays I trust it enough that it can be used by everyone once they manage to install it. And that's where I'll leave it. So if you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it by hitting that like button and while you're at it, also subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in more content like this, then you should definitely check out my channel. Here, I'll even get you started. And all that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.